Hi, this is Elliot Hassel and welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about best practices for conceptual math, and this comes from an article in Better Evidence-Based Education in which two math experts summarize the contemporary research around this topic of what are the best ways to help students really learn math in a deep conceptual way that's going to lead them to be able to retain the information, make connections, think about it critically, etc. And one of the first things the authors point out is that Previously, in past generations, it's been thought that conceptual math and skill-based math, so multiplication tables, things like that, were actually separate, two different sort of separate ideas, two different streams of math instruction, and you did different things to help students get each one. What they're finding now, however, is they're very much more two sides of the same coin, and that actually doing strategies that help students build conceptual math indeed does help them with their basic skills as well. There are some things that are separate, certainly, but by and large, a much broader circle in the middle of the Venn diagram than previously thought. And so, the two overarching best practices that the authors pull out for building conceptual math and also helping with the math skills are work and talk and work and wrestle. That's how they sort of categorize them, and I'm going to go through each one now. Work and talk, the sort of three different specific strategies that they suggest, and, and overall what they're talking about here is that students and the teacher are really engaging in conversations about meaningful math problems and why things work the way they do. And so the first of these strategies is to examine relationships between facts, procedures, and ideas, both within the lesson and between lessons. So this is looking at why is are we doing this particular thing with multiplication or with word problems today, and how that connect to what we did previously, yesterday, or last week, or in the unit we did before. How does the idea of finding the area, or finding the perimeter, connect to some of the ideas that we did back when we were talking about patterns? Things like that, making the connections explicitly between ideas, between procedures, uh, between uh, sort of the different lessons that you've been doing to help students see the cohesive whole of what they're learning. Next, dig into why procedures work the way they do. The example the authors give in the article is, why do we add most of the time from right to left? Why is that just the way that we do things? Why do we add columns that way? Why couldn't we do it the other way? Uh, and so by asking that kind of a question to students, you're sort of really getting them to think, this isn't just a rule, this isn't just something we do, there's a reason why we do it, and there's a reason why we couldn't do it in other ways. And then the third one here is solve problems with different procedures and then compare and contrast the results. So there are certainly plenty of math problems where there isn't just only one way to do it. Um, estimation is a great example. There's a previous Best Practices Weekly, you can go back to the edition 1.2, which talks about the different strategies for uh, looking at estimation. And so by helping taking students through this and thinking, here's an estimation problem and you we're going to solve this in two or three different ways, and then we're going to talk about what are the advantages and disadvantages of each procedure. Again, you're really helping students understand that it's not just about doing this one algorithm to solve this problem. It's about really understanding what you're doing, why you're doing it, uh, and really gets, again, at the conceptual understanding while also building their skill. The second overarching best practice is work and wrestle. And this is the idea that we're giving students some difficult problems and we're really helping them kind of wrestle and just engage with it in meaningful ways to build their understanding. And there are two specific strategies here. The first is pose problems just past students' comfort level. So this is giving them problems that's slightly harder than what they can do or what they can master. And so an example here is taking something they've already mastered and putting a little twist on it. So instead of just doing division, maybe you're adding something extra into it. You're adding an extra digit. You're adding a, you know, a zero in an odd place. You're giving them a problem that they, you know they can do the sort of basic default idea of, and then you're extending it. And by doing that, you're giving students an opportunity to really wrestle with how do I actually apply and extend these things that I've mastered, these ideas that I have, but now I have to manipulate them into a new context. And that forces them to really, again, wrestle and engage in a much deeper way. And then along with that, have students present their solutions to these tough problems and have the class discuss it. So again, by, you're not just kind of leaving students on an island here. You're facilitating, you're helping, and you're ultimately giving them an opportunity to say, this is how I went about trying to solve this problem. 
and the class can have a discussion about the validity of that answer. Did they get the right answer? Did What about the method that they used? Was there another method that other students used? So again, you're having a very rich discussion about a very rich and meaningful problem, um, which is the key here, that it's not just having a class discussion about a basic problem that everyone can master. It's having a, a discussion about a difficult problem that students have really wrestled with and come up with their own solution to, and then they're presenting it, um, and they're really owning that piece of it. And so, these are sort of, again, the, the overarching strategies, best practices that current research says around building conceptual math. Um, they're certainly just scratching the surface, but they're sort of, the authors are concluding by saying that ultimately, if we're looking at ways to work and talk and work and wrestle and have students do these things, we're going to really help our students walk away with not just the math skills, but also a very deep conceptual understanding of why math works the way it does. Thanks for watching, and happy teaching.